phonetically speaking, at any point, we could do fun things. So krat, manal, and uh, what else, what else? Go to skrat, nal. Unstressed syllables would be a good example of this. One of these would be aspiration. So welcome. This is a brand new playlist, uh, a brand new Conlang with me playlist. The premise behind this kind of thing is we will make a Conlang before your eyes from scratch. It's going to exist in the same world as the call language family that we've been working on in the Conlang with me, but they are going to exist in the same kind of fictional universe, which we will also at one point be uh, playing with. So I'm going to, um, I don't know, let's just jump in. Let's just jump in. We've got We've got a side webcam to go to. Here we go. Okay. So I've called this new language family. I have some ideas that I'd like to start with. Here are some sort of seed ideas for this conlang. I want, I want it to be kind of inspired by Southeast Asian languages. These so-called mainland Southeast Asian linguistic area. What is this linguistic area all about? Um, there is a strong tendency towards monosyllabicity. So morphemes being isomorphic to syllables. Um, if not monosyllabicity, then sesquisyllabicity, where you have, um, you have basically monosyllables, but with a little kind of half syllable at the start. So instead of being things like tom, kan, dat, it's pakom, matam, tadat, things like that. So you often have very reduced uh, vowel contrasts in that, that very first part of the syllable. Um, often you just get schwa. Uh, another thing in this uh, area is um, tone. So we'll probably play with that. And, and tone is always fun to derive uh, historically. And so we'll play with that. And uh, what else? What else? Yes, yeah, a very strongly kind of analytic um, grammar. So not a lot of um, not a lot of obligatory morphology going on. Um, so things like that. So let's just write it down. Sesqui syllables slash monosyllables analytic uh, tone and tonogenesis the process of uh, tone coming into being. Oh, yeah, you can still see it, it's fine. Uh, maybe I'll just make this a little bit, a little bit bigger. Great. Um, so that's the, the vague plan. It's going to be its own language family as well. Um, we are going to be uh, using this in the other Conlang with me playlist, in the first one, uh, the call languages. We are going to be, um, as as is it is it Janssen? I assuming I'm assuming because you've mentioned Austrian phone companies that that J is going to be pronounced um, in the German fashion. I could be wrong. Um, loan words are going to come in. Um, this is going to be, or at least one of these languages is going to be one of the ones that comes into contact exactly, Adam, with Lang three B, which we'll need a name for uh, at some point in the call language family, and it's going to be. We're going to appeal to contact with this language family to explain a lot of the changes that have uh, happened in the Kalf uh, language family. So that's kind of cool. Um, all right, so let's just do a little bit of phonology. We don't have a huge amount of time today. Um, oh, okay. Well, it's a, if it's if it's a J, then it's a J. If it's a J, it's a J. Um, we don't have a huge amount of time today, so I'll I'll, I'll jump right in. We've got our IPA keyboard here, which the kind of fun part of it is obscured by my camera. If anyone has, and then we've got bread, but oh my goodness. All right, well, um, here we go. I know why you guys come here. You come here to see me rearrange windows and you know, you're never disappointed. Um, so we've got our IPA keyboard, we've got our Google Sheet. Let's just make some uh, make some phonology. So I think let's start with the syllable structure because this is something that's going to guide us.
shout out to Taizan Day. Um, so we're going to want a very limited syllable structure. I'm trying not to uh, do the same things as a conlanger over and over again. So I have, I definitely have my my crutches that I, I lean on, um, I keep going back to. Um, or, or what's the better way of putting it? The uh, I have my I have my usual suspects. Let's just say. So um, so we have one of these usual suspects is CVC, uh, or very simple simple uh, syllable structure. So why not? We are going to have a CVC syllable structure. Obviously optional. These are optional. We also are going to want to make it moderately, um, moderately complex. So we can have some onset clusters as long as the second element of the cluster is um, is a liquid um, or a semi-vowel. And then that's the syllable structure, but we have we're not quite done yet because I want the proto language to be a sesquisyllabic language, and that means that we're going to need. It's not so phono, phonologically speaking, in an abstract sense, these are one syllable. However, phonetically speaking, we do have um, two full vowels, um, or at least two vowels. Whether they're full vowels or not, I don't know. So we have a a vowel here, and we'll we'll put a little. I don't know. Don't take this dot as meaning a uh, a a full syllable boundary, but this is the sesquisyllable, and this vowel is not going to allow all of the contrast that the that this vowel has. So we'll call it um, I don't know I don't know what we'll call it. We'll call it lower mm, not lowercase. We'll call it v v r meaning vowel reduced. Uh, too abstract. Let's make some examples. So, assuming that we're going to have at least um, pataka mana pralayawa um, and sa, we'll have more than this, but these are you know a fairly safe bet. Um, we will have shapes like oh, and we need vowels too. Uh, so let's say we definitely have, do we want to do the classic? Yeah, let's do the classic. Uh, the classic five vowel system. And I think maybe we can only have, so this is only a a, e, u. So only these more these uh, more peripheral vowels uh, in the sesquisyllable, and over the course of time, these are going to be worn down to schwa or nothing, and yada yada yada. But we're going to have all these kind of all these kind of fun things. I I promise. Um, but we got to start somewhere, and let's start with uh, just these a e u vowels. Often you'll find in in phonologically weak positions, you will have fewer contrasts, what weak means will depend, you know, will differ from language to language. Um, so think of things like um, unstressed syllables would be a good example of this. Uh, unstressed syllables in a, a stress accented language, you often see fewer contrasts in, in those syllables. So in a, a stressed syllable, you'll have the full range of all contrasted vowels and in unstressed syllables, you can only have a few. That's a pretty common thing. And so I'm going to treat this this um, this 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 half syllable at the start as one of these kind of weak positions. Another kind of weak position is within the reduplicant in a, a reduplication in a reduplication construction. Uh, so often you will have fewer contrasts in the reduplicant, which is the the part of the word that gets um, that gets reduplicated. Um, the result of the reduplication. So if you have something like um, this this would be something like CV reduplication, so sa. I don't know salus. You might have something like sa salus. So this sa is the reduplicant, and the salus is the base. Anyway, I'm going astray. So let's make some syllables. So we would have something like. We might have something like. Prak, 
we might have something like mot. We might have something like case. So these would be without this little this little bit at the start. So so far so so normal. But then we might also have something like Kiris or Sakrat or Munal, something like this. And this is how we would kind of divide this. The stress is always going to be on the second part, the second phonetic syllable. Um, so this is what we're looking at for the proto language. And as a preview, what we'll probably do in the descendant languages is neutralize all of these initial vowels. I'm sorry, Sakrat, Manal, and then we'll eventually go to Skrat, Nal, and at any point we could do fun things. So you might have something like um, Tutan, which goes to Tutan, which turns into an initial geminate, Tan. And because initial geminates are very, very, very hard to hear, um, this could be reinterpreted as some kind of tense consonant, maybe like Korean has which might be the source of high tone at some point. Um, so yeah, these are all things that are sort of always open to us uh, as we go through this. And what we're gonna do is make enough of these so that with, with slightly different um, grammars and phonologies so that we can have a lot of fun stuff to do with the call languages. And um, at some point we are going to do some some world building and I foresee maps I foresee maps coming in and essentially we're gonna live in this we're gonna live in this this world for a while at least um, because the more you do in a kind of con world the more fun it gets because the things start interacting with each other in all sorts of ways um, and possibilities open up so this is uh, basically what I'm thinking, but I think we need to have a little bit more, uh, a little bit more fun in the consonant uh, system. Uh, so another thing I'm guilty of is constantly making um, systems with no voicing contrasts. So let's break that pattern. So let's do something like pabatadakaga. Um, I think we should have a velar nasal in here because it would be fun. Let's get huh in as well. What else do we want? What else do we want? I'm wondering if we want to do something even... You know what I want to do? I want a three-way phonation contrast, but I don't know if I want it in the proto-language. So uh, what I mean by three-way phonation contrast is, well, I should first explain phonation. So we have, you know, if you've heard um, me yammer on about anything related to phonetics, you've probably heard me talk about voicing before, um, the vibration of the vocal folds in the production of a speech sound, the difference between s and z. Um, so that is a contrast in phonation. And there are other kinds of contrast in phonation other than voiced versus unvoiced. Um, one thing that we, uh, one of these would be aspiration, which uh, those of us who are, um, who have gone through an introductory linguistics class taught in English usually come across this pretty early. Um, so it's the difference between the P in pin versus the P in spin. And if my pop filter is doing its job, which I very much suspect that it is not, um, the the contrast between those will be lessened, but there is a puff of air that comes uh, after after a voice that stops in certain contexts in English, and pin is one of those contexts. Anyway, so the 
that's a three-way uh, phonation contrast. Um, so I was thinking we could have something like that. We could have voicing, b, voicelessness, p, and aspiration, p, all coexisting as contrasts. But what I think we should do, and Alethea has said it, let's make that actually de uh, develop diachronically. Um, because what we can do is we can have uh, we can have aspiration come out of things like s stop um, s stop clusters, and so that can I believe that can happen. I'm not sure. I don't have a reference off the top of my head. Maybe Alethea does. Um, Alethea, do you know of any cases where phonation where aspiration has developed out of constant clusters? And uh, if you are in on YouTube and watching this later, and you know something, leave it in the comments. Um, but I, w I basically want to really dive into the the history of um, of this sort of Southeast Asian linguistic area, which includes uh, a few different language families, and look at the historical phonology and see what's happened, and, and kind of use that as as inspiration to make this a kind of natural. Um, yeah, a naturalistic language family. Although I don't want us to be to, to stick too close to it. It's something just nice to get inspiration from a different uh, a different area. There's pre-aspiration in Icelandic, and there's also pre-aspiration in um, in Scots, uh, Scottish Gaelic as well, uh, which is kind of interesting because there might be some kind of like mini linguistic area going on there. Um, yeah, although that just that just um, came out of came out of a, a, an earlier kind of fortis lenis contrast in in the uh, in the in the Goidelic languages because in Irish you don't get that um, you just have aspirated um, unaspirated yeah interesting um, sorry I went off on my own little uh, my own little tangent there so we could do, yeah, we could do anything like that. I think we, that we want to get some some nice phonation contrasts in the descendant languages. Maybe we could even get a four-way contrast like uh, like Sanskrit, um, where we have breathy voice as well, ba, that kind of thing. Who knows? You know, we have lots of possibilities open to us. Um, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to sadly end this soon. This I just wanted to kind of lay out the plan for this this language family here and we're going to be developing it more as we go but basically we want this kind of phonology we may play with it what we'll probably do next time is get a, a word generator up um, like lexifer or something and create some phonological shapes and just see what see what uh, looks good maybe we want a little bit more fun in the vowel space maybe we want a little bit more fun in the consonant space um, and then we're going to make this analytic, and this is something that you very rarely see in conlangs. I don't know why. I even constantly get pulled away from making analytic um, languages, analytic languages, um, languages where grammatical relations are expressed um, by essentially by ordering of elements, word order, rather than... Um, rather than things like inflection. Um, I always get pulled away, pulled away from, from these, uh, an isolate, oh, sorry, these analytic languages and, and towards synthetic languages. I, um, I'm gonna stand my ground here and we're going to, we're gonna keep this up. And then, yeah, we're gonna have fun with some, we're gonna have a lot, a lot of fun with historical phonology. Um, so that's the, the, the main plan. I'm sorry, I have to, uh, end this uh, relatively, you know, have make this a relatively short session. Um, sadly, I have uh, another, another pressing engagement to go to, but let me just end this, um, let me end this by, by speaking to the camera. Um, for those who are joining on YouTube, thanks so much for, for joining us. You are going to see a lot more of this language family now that we've sort of laid the groundwork and seen, seen where we're going to go. You're going to see a lot more of this in the future. Um, so, check it out, like, subscribe, et cetera, et cetera, because you'll see a lot more. And if you haven't seen it, we also have another playlist uh, where we're developing a, a very, very different language family. Um, so we'll put a link to that in the description as well.